Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're at a two bed house that I did in the ICR a couple of weeks ago and we've got a line and CPC fault to find on a ring final. So do come along and see how we find these faults. Okay so we're here at house, uh, two bed and it's got one uh, ring. The ring final's got two faults on it. It's got a line and a CPC no continuity fault, which we've got to try and trace. As I say, there's only one ring. Uh, there's about a dozen sockets to check. So, on this video, we're going to go through what uh, the procedure for doing this for checking a ring final to find out where the faults are on a ring final. Um, the board um, is fairly new. Um, there's an isolator so we can completely safely isolate the board but we'll do self -is safe isolation anyway um, and then we're going to uh, just disconnect the cables on the ring and put, our, put one of those on on one end of the ring and then we're going to go around the sockets getting readings uh, and find where we're not getting readings effectively not worried about the values at all we're just I just want to trace out how the ring is all put together. So we'll go round all the ring, all the sockets to start with getting readings, finding which sockets are not having have not got readings. We're going to test the line first. So I'll, uh, the neutral is fine. The neutral is con has got continuity on it. So I'm going to connect the line and the neutral together on one leg. Go round, get the readings. Then I'm going to connect the um, line and neutral on the other leg go back round in the opposite direction and hopefully from that we'll be able to map out exactly how the ring is all, together, all put together as you know the further away from the board I get the higher the readings are going to be closer to the board the lower the readings we should be able to map the board out so we're going to worry about the line not being uh, not having continuity to start with and then we'll do the um, then we'll do the CPC. Hopefully, fingers crossed, both forks are in the same place. And they're behind a socket and not in the wall or under the floor. But this is going to be, we're going to be here a while. So we'll go to the board, get it isolated, get the, get this way go on, and then we'll start with the sockets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to label every socket um, as I go around, and I'm going to label it with a number and the reading I get or not, as the case may be, and then once I've gone around one way and gone around back around the other way, I'm going to sit down, map the ring out, and hopefully from that we'll work out exactly where that fault is. Okay, so here we are at the board. Um, there's sockets. We're going to, but we're going to. Um, that's the MCB for the sockets. But we're going to shut down the whole board because, like I say, this this is there's only one ring for the whole house, so might as well just do the whole thing. Um, like I say, down here we have a natural isolator, so we're going to do that as well. Um, I completed the EICR on this a couple of weeks ago, which is how come I know where everything is and why we've got a fault. Um, so all these um, labours will all be updated when I've finished uh, today. So let's get this board um, switched off and we'll get it uh, safe isolation procedure on it. So here we are, this board cover off. Um, as you can see, we do have a bit of a mixture of wiring here, but most of it, uh, no, I'd say some of it is on the old wiring scheme, some of it is on the new. As you can see, the ring is on the old. So we've got red for the line, black for the neutral, and the just normal colours for the CPC, that's why it's up here. So that's the one we're going to be worried about today. So we're going to get that off, identify which leg we're going to be working on, and then we'll uh, connect that together with that way go that I've got. Okay, just before we start, as you can see, I've crop clipped the two legs onto the line, and we're using a QTEC uh, tester. I'm just going to switch it to continuity and I'll just press the button and as you can see nothing nothing at all on there so we're going to grab uh, we won't do the other ones but as you can see so there's nothing at all on that line and there should be but there isn't 
so we'll get this all um, wagoed up and then we'll take it from there okay so there we are that leg got the neutral and the line connected together so now we can go around and test all the sockets okay so here we are set up at the first socket <coughs> there's no right or wrong way to choose a socket when you're doing this in the house so I've just picked the first one that's actually nearest to the board so we're not worried about the readings like I say they'll go up and down depending on how far away from the board I am so we've got it plugged in to our tester to stick it to continuity and there we go so we've got a 1.77 1.76 Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll put this down as a 1.76 on this one. Um, we could jiggle the switch, I suppose. Um, I don't think it'll make a lot of difference. It will, 1.42. This is what I have got to watch. 1 1.41. 1.40. 1.40. 1.40. That probably will do the same thing. Probably bring it down even more. 1.26. Four. I don't think it's going to come down any more than that. I'll put two three. Put two three. Put two three. Okay, so. Okay, so we're not going to get anything lower than that. So we're going to write that down. We'll label this one up as uh, socket one with 1.25, and then we're going to go round the house and see where we get to. Right, okay, sort of fill people in with what we found. Okay, so went round one way round the ring and got a reading on every single socket. Oh, that was not good, but it was okay, fair enough. Got a reading on every single one. So put the line and neutral together on the other leg and yeah I was getting readings but nearly up at the thousand ohms so there was definitely a problem and that was right from the start so my initial thought was it's the cable from the consumer board anyway did a bit, bit more bidding around and suddenly realized ah right there is actually a problem between or appeared to be a problem between the socket behind the television and a socket behind the cabinet either side of the fireplace. Took the front off the socket by the fireplace, that is a spur. So did some tests on there, um, what wasn't really conclusive to be honest. But then I realised that there was some, that I was looking actually in the wrong place and it was actually between the socket um, well, it appeared to be a, between the socket and there was a, there's another socket in the dining room. So we came into the dining room, it's over here. So I'm going to turn the camera around and you can see what I found. Possibly. Okay, so here we are. So I took the socket front off and I found a lot of corrosion in the wiring, um, not great. So I took the so socket front off and as you can see, jumpered everything all over the place here. Um, and it was then I realized that, right, okay, I'm actually getting readings on the CPC now between the CPC and the neutral. So we did the jumpering in the consumer board and sure enough, I now have continuity on the CPC right around the house. It's not brilliant, I'm getting two ohms in places, so I think there's some corrosion going on in some of the back, the back of these boxes. Um, so it would appear, um, possibly corrosion, possibly this um, socket front is duff at this point. Either way, removing that socket front and giving these wires a bit of a clean has actually solved the CPC problem. At least it solved the CPC problem. I'm not getting continuity. I'm not getting the values I would like. Um, anyway, 
um, we'll do proper testing with proper value. Well, zero my tester and um, get some proper readings. But I've got a funny feeling I'm going to find that there's actually more going on here than meets the eye. Um, anyway, it hasn't solved the problem on the line. When I connect up the line and neutrals together, I'm still getting an open circuit. So the line and the line break is typically somewhere else. So that's going to be my next stage. You can see if I bring it in close how corroded these cables are. Um, it, I mean the corrosion at the back box. You can see it. Um, it isn't great. Um, so, you know, it's something that I'm going to have to do. I th I've got a funny feeling. What I'm finding, what I'm finding, is that there's corrosion on the CPCs and give me high line, high values. You can see the actual line conductors are actually in pretty good nick. So I'm pretty, and so are the neutrals. It's purely the earth wires that are in a bad way. CPC wires, sorry. So, I think what I'm going to do here in a, in a little while is I'm going to replace the front socket on this and retest, give these CPCs a bit of a clean and put some new earth sleeving on them. Um, it's not going to solve the problem right around the property because I think I'm going to have to probably, probably do this on every single socket in the property, would be my guess. But anyway, I think the next thing I need to do is find try and now find where the line break is because it isn't here it's somewhere else so we'll see where we go just show just very quickly because i need to show this probably for the landlord as well this uh, potentially this video uh, so you can see that i've got the line and the cpc connected on that leg i did have the line so not the line the neutral and the cpc is connected on that leg i had the neutral and cpc connected on the other leg and it was absolutely fine I could go up on stage further and do the figure of eight to prove that what I'm looking at is a, a ring. That's probably not a bad idea, actually. Um, but anyway, just a second. So here we are back here um, at the first socket. I'll just turn my tester on. 0.56, so we're okay on there. If I go back to wander around here just for a minute so uh, just a second so you can see we're on the, diff on the other leg now so if I go back to the tester press the button again and as you can see it is a much much higher reading um, but obviously I have not nulled these leads or anything else so you can take this reading with a pinch of salt for at the moment, but given the condition I'm seeing the socket, socket backs in, my guess is we're probably looking at uh, corrosion. However, we also might be looking at, let me just bring us back to where we are. Obviously what I've done here is I've jumped with everything, so we're not going to get a true reading until I get the socket front back on, so I'm not going to make a de de definitive diagnosis of that until I've we've got a proper ring circuit in place so I think just for the fun of it I might just do a, a, a figure of eight on the neutral to, uh, to CPC and see if I actually get a reading um, theoretically I should if this is if this if this is generally a ring I should get a reading so we're going to try that okay so I'll show the figure of eight in a second but we're all plugged in we're doing Neutral CPC, and we are indeed getting a reading. And as you can see, figure of eight configuration there, neutral CPC. So we are definitely looking at a ring. So, right. So we can now move on and we can now try and get um, the find where the line fault is. Okay, we have a such a strange thing. We do appear to have actually solved the CPC problem. However, I've taken some other covers off and there are CPC faults in those. So it could be there are multiple ones of these. 
I found broken CPCs and all sorts just hanging on for dear life. So I, I do think that this is going to have to be a case of I'm going to have to take every socket cover off at some point and, well, it's a mess. Anyway, the reason for doing this video is to document where I think we're up to. So I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to th think, I think, I've sussed the root of this ring. So, um, you know where the probes are at the moment, however, this cable here is coming past these two. I don't know what they do, but I'm bothered at the moment. Anyway, on this on this part of the ring, I'm getting continuity. So incoming is here. This part of the ring appears up to this point fine. However, this one isn't. Um, yeah, I know the way I've done this. It, it's fine. This part of the ring doesn't seem to have a line continuity. So I think, I'm thinking, that this cable comes from here, goes past the cooker, and ends up here. And the reason is, is that has a 0.51 reading, this has a 0.61 reading. Makes sense. I think that this then, the um, boiler, is spurred off that last plug, off that plug, that one. Anyway. I think that I think the cable then goes from there, either up over the ceiling or comes over anyway. It comes over here, and I got readings of 0 0.72 and 0 0.75 on the two plugs that are down Whoop. there. Above me is one of the bedrooms, so we're going to walk through here. Follow me. So I think the ring then. Bear with me. I'm pretty certain now that the ring comes up over here because we have the bathroom there, there's nothing in there. But this room here is practically above the kitchen. And here I'm getting readings of 0.95 and 0.88. So I think the ring comes up here to here. I think the ring then comes over here. I've got a reading somewhere, 1.01 there. The socket's over there, don't worry about that. <clears throat> then there's a socket here, a 0.125. I think that socket, I've just been to, is the furthest point away because <clears throat> I'm going to come down here now because we're directly underneath that bedroom now, and this one is 0.125. If I remember rightly, I think this one drops to 0.118. I think it drops again here to 0.111111. I think it drops again over here, I believe, if I remember rightly. I've lost the sticker. The sticker's here somewhere. There it is, 0.77. And finally, the ring ends up over here. 0.51 I think that is the root of the ring I think this leg here is heading back to the board that's one leg going back to the board that's 0.51 that one this one over here is also 0.51 the board is the other side of this wall other side of this wall that's also 0.51 I think that's the other end of the ring the other end of the leg of the ring. So this end of the this end of the ring, I'm getting a reading. Here, I'm not. So there's no reading here. And <clears throat> there's no reading there. So I think the fault. So the fault, I thought the fault might have been in the cabling to the board. I don't think it is anymore because this leg here is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If it goes back to the board, that leg is fine. But what I'm getting here is I'm not getting any continuity at all from that cable onwards 
if, if that cable goes basically to the rest of the ring, which it does, somewhere it isn't. Uh, it's broken somewhere and it could be anywhere. But now, now I'm pretty sure I know the root of the power that I know how the ring is rooted now. So the thing that I need to do is to prove it. What I could do next, just to prove my theory, is if I take off this one, so long as there's no break between the cable of this socket and this socket, then I should get a continuity reading pretty low to be honest because it's only a short cable. So I'm going to do that and see if my theory holds. Okay, so I think we're slowly making progress now. So we've hooked that up there. We've hooked that up there. And sure enough, we're getting a reading of 0 0.09. I've nulled the lead, so I've getting a reading of 0 0.09. So definitely that cable in there, that one there, it can only be going over here. Because I'm only, that's all I'm testing, is just that length of cable from there to there. I'm not, kidding, I'm not testing any further. So there's no problem between there and there. So the break is now further on. Now, I'm trying to think of a more efficient way of doing this, to be honest. This socket here is in, a, is in an appalling state, so I'm going to replace it. Um, now, what I could do... It's obviously we know that that, that that red line cable that's heading over to the other end of the kitchen and we probably know that that, that that red and black cable is heading over to behind the fridge. Now I've already tested these cables to see if it was a socket front that was maybe causing a problem. It isn't. There is still no continuity. Um, but I will retest that in a minute just to prove that I am actually absolutely right about that. So I'll do that first and then we'll go on from there. Okay, to so update this little video diary, we have here, we know that this red and line and neutral cables going down that one there, those are heading back to here. And then that leg is definitely heading back to that leg there. It's on that cable. And the reason I know that is we head back here. And we have a 0.56 reading. So we know that that leg is heading back to the board from this point. So, so far we are, we are right in the direction that this is heading. We've also now just proved that there is a, this, to this part of the, to this part, there's continuity. There's no break in that cable to this point. So the break is from here on somewhere. Um, So what we're going to do is methodically go round the ring, because I can't think of another way to do it um, now because of how things are working. So we need to get, what I'm going to do, because they're quite hard to get to, I think the next point of call I'm going to do is I'm going to skip one plug and I'm going to head to where I think is the next point of call, which is the sockets upstairs in the where are we? rear bedroom. I think that's the next link on this. Yeah. <coughs> okay, five hours later, and we have 
finally, I believe, track down all the problems. There are multiple places where the uh, CPCs are either broken or badly corroded, and I'm going to have to scratch my head out how to uh, how to repair all those. Um, but if I jump with them all all around the house, I get continuity on the CPC, so that's fine. We know the neutral was fine. I've been going. I've confirmed the direction of the ring and I was absolutely spot on where the direction of the ring was going in my earlier part of the video I was absolutely spot on so yeah d tracing out a ring the way I did it is the, you know is the way to do it you just um, uh, jump her off one leg of the ring go round and you'll, you you will locate how the ring is all put together um, it, 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 it works anyway went round the house uh, skipped a few sockets out as I was going around and I was get, getting continuity finally I was getting continuity on everything so typically the very first socket I tested without taking it off the wall has proven to be the one with the problem and I'm going to show you what it is so here we are here it is it looks innocuous enough doesn't it and you know, pretty nice box. However, when I unscrewed it from the wall, I kid you not, the that front of the box, it fell off the wall. None of these cables were tightened into their terminals. Not one of them. It just fell off the wall. I'm surprised anything works, to be honest. Anyway, as I said, so, before what I was getting, let me just cable this up so we can see, so put this on the same cable so you can see where the cable is so before I was getting problems, so we've got that all on let's just turn that off, hang on, there we go now, don't my luck, I've probably cabled this wrong one yeah, so forget that, that's basically it's an open circuit so we'll go to the other cable and we'll go to there and we go to there. Oh, hang on. I've just realised. So, uh, my bad. I've actually rewired it in the in the in the board because I did all these tests. So before, when I had line to line on those two cables, I got an open circuit. Now, it's all working. And I've done the line. And I've done the CPC. Everything is well. The CPC has got its own issues, but anyway. Anyway. What I'm going to do now before I tidy up is I'm actually going to confirm that the, the ring is actually all functioning. So I'm going to do some cross connects. But this is where the problem was. At least that's where it appears to be the problem anyway. So I've spoken to the, the, to the landlord and I'm going to email all my findings on this. The, the EI, the, I, I did the EICR. Typically this was the one socket I did not take off the wall. On the ICR, you don't have to do it. And typically, this is the first one I tested this morning without taking it off the wall. It's, it's typical. Absolutely typical. Anyway, so I've got to find the, the, do the findings. There are multiple issues with all the other sockets. There's, there's rust, there's corrosion, there's broken cables. This is ridiculous. Can you see how short that cable's been cut? I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that to get this back on, but to be fair, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I might actually take this out of commission. Um, I might wake these off and basically put this put this particular socket out of commission until I can work out how to get that. But because that that's just not going to work. That's that's not going to fly. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to get all these back on. I have no idea where this goes. To be honest with you, this is a spur, and, and that that's going, Lord knows where. Um, I have not a clue as to where that's going. I have no. I thought it was going to the bedroom, but it isn't. Um, but anyway, that's for another time. So there you go. Ring final testing. It it takes hours. This is five hour, Five hours it's taken to get to this point. I don't know why. 
when I was doing one leg of the ring, I was getting readings all the way around, and then when I did the go back the other way, I wasn't getting any readings at all. I've, n I've that's why I started to think that the fault was in the board, not in one of the sockets, because my normal way of ring finding, just final fault finding, just wasn't working. So I've had to resort to the old fashion way of taking every socket off the ball and tracing it that way. Well, not every socket, but most sockets. But in the end, tracing the ring out and knowing where how this ring is all put together in this house has really helped, and I'm going to document that for the landlord because it'll be helpful for them in the future. If I'm not if it's, I'm not the electrician that deals with this in the future, a future electrician can come along and he will know exactly what I've done and where the ring goes. Um, I don't know why electricians don't do that as a matter of course. Document where your cables are going when you're doing work. You may not be the same electrician that might come in later. If I, if I had... If the previous electrician had documented how this is all wired together, I could have found this fault probably in less than an hour. Instead, I've had to basically circuit diagram this entire house. Anyway, off my soapbox. Fact is, it's done. Because a lot of the socket fronts are old and, and things like that, it might be that maybe now's the time to renovate all the sockets and replace them all. don't know. But there you go. So that's what we have to do. So I'm going to put everything back together again and I think I'm going to head off for the day, get the power back on for the client and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>